Having played the bass trombone for the last five years, I'm not really used to playing this kind of stuff. But anyway, in today's video, I want to talk about this little guy here. And I've not used it and I've not looked at it and I see that there's some stains and it's not been taken care of. It's not been pampered enough. It should have been pampered more because it is very expensive. It's a very nice mouthpiece. It's a beautiful mouthpiece. But I, d I completely forgot about it. To be honest, I completely forgot about this. I completely forgot about that. Um, I found this when I wanted to do a review for a case. As I said in the previous video that you can see right here, I talk about the valve trombone and all these things. It's not so interesting, so you don't have to watch it. But if you do want to watch it, I will link it down below. And anyway, having found that, I found this directly attached to it. It was not in a pouch. It was not, um, you know, anywhere else than just attached to it. Because I used to play very late at night on this thing the last time that I played and I would just um, attach this mouthpiece on it, I would leave it there and it's been attached here for years. Um, very bad, very very bad. Bad for the hygiene, bad for the mouthpiece, bad for your allergies, your lips, whatever, very very bad. Don't do this. But this is what I used to do, I was young, I was foolish. And anyway, today I want to talk about it. And anyway, today I want to talk about it. It's the Monet Prana TS. Six. It is a gold piece mouthpiece, although I think some of the gold is kind of getting away here. There's some stains, I don't know why. Um, I'm going to try to take them out. They're not like dirt stains or anything, they're like stains in the metal. I don't know if you can see it. It's a very, very nice mouthpiece. It's a uh, small bore mouthpiece, so it's perfect for like valve trombones, jazz trombones. I don't know why I said valve trombones, maybe because he's here and he wants to be a, a jazz trombone. But he is. He's a, he's a jazz from Um But anyway, I want to tell you why I bought it. Um, 350 plus euros for a mouthpiece because I had to ship it from America, of course. Oh no, I didn't. I, had to, I bought this in, in The Hague, in Den Haag, in, in Holland. Uh, so I didn't have to ship it. So it was basically 350 euros, which is approximately $380, I guess, $400. I don't know. The dollar was stronger back then because, you know, America was stronger. <laughs> um, uh, I'm joking or not. I don't know. I'm not. I don't want to be political. Um, and anyway, 350 euros is a lot of money for a mouthpiece. So why did I buy? Is it because it was hip? Is it because my uh, idols are using Monet? You know, like I was really a, a huge fan of Winton. Uh, still am. Probably not as much as before, of course. Um, but. Still am. Of course I am. He's, he's an amazing, amazing person, amazing player. Um, it's just when I was younger, I would listen to his albums all day long from the moment I got up to the moment I fell asleep with his CDs. There were CDs back then. Uh, so I, I'm still a fan, but you know, when I was younger, I was more of a fan. <laughs> anyway, is it because of that? Maybe. That's probably a reason. But the biggest reason, I think, and I hope that I was not so shallow, to choose a mouthpiece back then. You know, I've, I've, I've made some videos about how to choose your mouthpiece and I'm being very pragmatic and I'm being very objective and I'm being very grown up and mature. But you know, when I was a kid, I was a kid. When I was stupid, because I was a stupid kid. So to choose a mouthpiece, the factors of like, does it fit, is it good for your range, etc, etc, did not really matter to me. I was not really thinking about range, I was not really thinking about sound, I was not really thinking about anything. Uh, really uh, for equipment anyway, you know, I could play practically on anything, it was okay, but I chose to play on this mouthpiece anyway, um, maybe because it was very appealing to have such an expensive mouthpiece. But most of all, okay, let's get real, most of all I think it's because this is the mouthpiece that gave me the, le the least crappy sound with my valve trombone when I started the valve trombone. When I started playing the valve trombone, I was playing on the crappy Yamaha. Uh, a crappy Yamaha, you know, it's, 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 it's an okay instrument for when, when you begin, but I had very high standards in the sound conception in my head, playing euphonium since the age of seven, having 
played with some really amazing players. I had this really beautiful sound in my head that I could not reproduce on the valve trombone. And you could say, yeah, that's because the valve trombone is a shitty instrument. And I could agree with it, but anyway, I was very stubborn and I wanted to play the valve trombone. And I also wanted to have a nice sound on the valve trombone. Now, I knew that I could not have a real trombone sound on the valve trombone. And that is because, you know, it's, it's not the same uh, genetic of the instrument. I don't know if you can say this, it's not the same DNA of the instrument. And that is because you have so much more resistance because of all the valves. A trombone basically you have no resistance. This is why it can be hard to switch from euphonium to trombone and have a beautiful sound, especially on a, on a jazz trombone where there's absolutely nothing, then a big tube, there's no resistance whatsoever, and this is what makes it so beautiful actually. Um, and on the, on the valve trombone you have all those uh, extra pieces of resistance there with the valves and the extra tubing that the uh, that you need for the valves etc so I had a shitty sound and when I tried this mouthpiece the Monet mouthpiece um, it the shitty sound was a little bit less shitty so I was able to have a little bit of a more beautiful sound so this mouthpiece really allowed me to go throughout the range uh, from pedal notes that I didn't really play at that time but at least until the the E the low E because you know one two three uh everything else is fake notes until you get to the b flat a bit like on a jazz trombone so in that respect this is probably a jazz trombone um but anyway and then go right up in the high register uh with uh, a relatively good intonation i say relatively good intonation again because of the nature of the valve trombone I had some intonation problems and it was really hard psychologically to constantly battle with intonation. This is something I never had to battle with when I was playing the piano. <laughs> I'm only kidding. This is not something I, I rarely had to battle with when I was playing euphonium because I was playing on a very in tune instrument and on euphonium, you know, it's a soft brass, it's very, very conical, not cylindrical at all. So it's easy to go out and the intonation is usually very good. Um, and on the valve trombone, I had some, some, some really big issues. You know, it might sound stupid in retrospect, but it, it was really, I, I was really struggling mentally and psychologically with constantly battling with intonation. I was like, this is not possible. It's me. It has to be me. How is it not me? And with the nature of the valve trombone, if you play in a certain way, if you try to play too loud or if you try to play like you would play on a, on a normal trombone or on a euphonium for that matter, then the intonation is going to be completely off. And throughout the register, this mouthpiece has made it much easier for me to play in, the, in all the registers. Now, I'm kind of um, battling in my head right now because I do believe that intonation and sound comes from within. Um, I see a lot of people on the forum say, hey, I'm playing really out of tune. Should I change mouthpiece? Um, I'm playing, I don't have a good sound, should I change mouthpiece, I don't have low or high register, should I change mouthpiece, etc, etc. And usually my answer is no, don't change mouthpiece, don't change instrument, just work on yourself. Work on good air, work on your long tones, work on your ears, work on, you know, you are the instrument, this is just amplification. For the valve trombone, it is a little bit particular, uh, and I'm not making myself excuses here. The valve trombone is a very particular instrument. It's not used very much for a good reason, and the good reason is that it doesn't play very well in tune and it doesn't have a superb sound. So I did have to compensate with a mouthpiece, uh, a better mouthpiece, to be able to play better in tune and with a better sound. And with the technology that Monet puts into his instruments and in his uh, mouthpieces also, uh, I couldn't explain to you the science behind it. I could, I couldn't. I could, I could read it off the internet, you know, I could Google it and read it, but I suggest you just do it. You go on uh, Monet's web page and he will explain to you it. He will explain it to you much better than I could because I don't understand uh, intrinsically this technology that they use, how they make it so. Uh, the only thing that I know is that it is very, very good. Uh, I always preach of not making any movements with the mouthpiece, not, not too many move, like no shifts. Of course, it's gonna move up and down when you go in the register a little bit, but as little as possible, even, especially if you wanna play some crazy intervals, some crazy like two octave, three octave intervals or whatnot. Uh, if you move a lot, then you won't be able to do it. When I was practicing with Winton in his house in New York, 
uh, in the corridor there was a big mirror and we would go there and he would show me and he would say don't move. Uh, of course, in my stupid teenager head, I was like, it's easy for you to say, you play on a mouthpiece this big. Um, uh, this is this big. Uh, <laughs> but it's true, you know, and, and you have to apply it as much as you can. Uh, you have to apply it uh, as much as your instrument permits and your mouthpiece permits. And on, on a small TS6, uh, like I say small, I know it's not small for most jazz trombonists out there, but it is small for me because I usually play on a 1 3 8 of a Greg Black, which is a big bass trombone mouthpiece. Uh, this, when, when I came to it today, I thought like, what, what is this? this? Is this a trumpet? Um, no, it's a trombone, okay. Um, what was I wanting to say? Yeah, not to move too much. And they, they managed to make this mouthpiece so that it is easier for you not to move too much. Again, by the way, I'm not sponsored. I mean, I have 520 subscribers. I have 20,000 minutes per month of viewing, which might seem a lot, but it's ridiculously little. So be, you know, be aware, be, trust me, uh, I'm not sponsored by any of those cases, by any of those instruments, by any of those mouthpieces that I'm telling you about. This is complete objective. Um, I'm not being paid or anything to, to change my opinions, and I will never be. So don't worry. Uh, this is this actually does work. I, I, f I find that it works. You know, I, I find that it really really helps, and this is why I chose the Monet mouthpiece. I know it's very expensive. I will not tell you go and buy one, because you know it is 350 euros. At least it was 350 euros when I bought it. In dollars, it's probably like the same actually. Um, but. I wouldn't say go and buy one because I don't want you to think, oh, I'm going to go and buy this extremely expensive, really cool looking mouthpiece and all of a sudden I will have the sound of an angel, I will have the register of Arturo Sandoval and I will be able to play high and low and fast and slow. No, it's not going to work like this. Again, your instrument is within. Now, if you do have the opportunity to do so, uh, do try one because they're really cool to try. If your local uh, retailer, how do you say it, your local brass shop, uh, have them in stock, then do try one uh, and make your own opinion. That's what I say for mouthpieces all the time. Don't listen to anybody. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to what people say in forums. Don't listen to your teacher. Yes, don't listen to your teacher. Un unless you're a real beginner and he can really see, but usually... Choosing a mouthpiece is so personal. It's so personal. Your teeth are different. Your mouth is different. Your embouchure is different. Uh, there's so many factors that make this the most personal piece of equipment that you will ever, ever, ever own. It doesn't matter your instrument. This is the most personal piece of equipment. And only you can decide what feels good. Um, and only you can decide what feels comfortable and only you can listen and can hear what you prefer when it comes to a mouthpiece, especially if you're a little bit more advanced and, you know, if this is the first mouthpiece that you buy, obviously ask a professional, ask your teacher, ask someone. If you're a little bit more advanced and you can have your own opinion, that would be better. Um, and yeah, that's it for today's video. It's already been much too long. I blabble a lot. I'm not really sure why. It's Saturday. It's raining outside and I don't want to do anything else than film some reviews of mouthpieces and um, cases. So I want to stay here for a little bit longer. Only kidding. Thanks for joining me. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please put a thumbs up. If you've not done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And I will see you very, very soon. Take care. Bye.